Hi everybody, welcome to Storm Reads, and today I'm just going to talk about some books. I found a few September books that I think sound kind of cool. Um, I've already did like a quarterly anticipated reads, and so I'm calling these like September hopefuls. Um, they're books that, you know, maybe they didn't uh, make my uh, anticipated read list, or maybe I just didn't know about them, even though I think they sound really cool. Um, also, maybe some of you guys have heard of them, and maybe you have like an e-arc or an arc, or maybe it's on your list to read, and you can let me know if it's any good. <laughs> so, we'll just get started with the ones that come out September 5th, which was a lot. So, I have, um, The Lord's Dark Daughter by Patricia C. Um, Reed, Reedy? I I'm probably butchering that. It is a middle grade fantasy from Random House and it looks cute. This is going to be a mixed bag of different genres. I didn't put any uh, genres in order or anything like that. I'm hoping that I got them all in like uh, date order, but we'll see what happens when it happens. Anyway, this is says Kayla is just an ordinary girl. Or so she thinks when the day of the state fair is interrupted by the news that she's the daughter of the Dark Lord, she and her family are quickly whisked to another world, one that's chock full of magic but lacking in technology. And so it sounds like it could be cute. It says as she ventures closer to her father, Kayla must decide whether to accept her birthright. It's her destiny for is her destiny for darkness, or can she become the new kind of dark lady? So, the next one I have is um, Mother Daughter Murder Night by Nina Simon. This is a mystery thriller from William Morrow, and it, it, it sounded kind of cool. It says, um, I've never read either one of these, but it says The Maid Meets the Last Thing He Told Me in this fun, fresh, and twisty debut whodunit about a grandmother, mother daughter trio who come together as amateur sleuths to solve a murder in this coastal California in their coastal California town. It says nothing brings an estranged family together like a murder next door. And so I'm guessing that their neighbor must get killed and they decide to try to figure out uh, what is going on. I I don't know. I didn't read a whole lot cuz I didn't want to know a whole lot about it. Okay, so the next one is Scenes of the Crime by Julie Ganon. Probably butchered that last name. But uh, it's a mystery thriller from Bantam. And uh, let's see, it says... An ambitious screenwriter tries to solve her friend's disappearance by recreating their fateful final girl's trip in this riveting locker room mystery from the author of All Dressed Up, which I've never read. A remote winery, a missing friend, and a bunch of sour grapes. So yeah, so we got five girlfriends and a remote winery in the Oregon coast. And so the one friend vanished without a trace. Okay, so it says, suspenseful, propulsive, interspersed with scenes from Emily's blockbuster screenplay. Screens of the crime is an unforgettable mystery that examines... Culpability, the shiny uh, rear view mirror of Hollywood storytelling, and the pitfalls of female friendship. So, it sounds kind of interesting, but like, you know, it's one of those that I'm not sure about, but it kind of sounds cool and I'm kind of curious about the blockbuster screenplay that's going to be like put out th throughout it and what it has to do with the mystery. Then I have Suddenly a Murder by Lauren Munez. It is a young adult mystery about or from Putman and Son, and it's about seven friends who throw a 1920s themed party where they all pretend where it's all pretend until one of them is murdered. Someone has brought a knife to the party. So the inspectors declare that it is murder and they're all suspects. They're the uh, Here's your suspects. There is the girlfriend in love, the other girl in despair, the old friend forlorn, 
the new friend distressed, <laughs> the brooding enigma, and then there's Izzy, the girl who brought the knife. <laughs> so it sounds kind of cool. Sounds like it's a little bit of a playoff of Clue, kind of. And yeah, this one I'm definitely like really, really interested in. It really sounds like up my alley. I'm always a little hit or miss with the young adult mysteries, but I do like to give them a try. Here's one that I'm super on the fence about, but it sounded kind of cool. So all you young adult romancers out there, you'll have to let me know if it's any good. So Library of Shadows by um, Rachel Moore. And so it's a young adult romance. It's got ghosts. It's got a mystery. And it's from Harper Teen. It says Radcliffe Prep. The third most haunted school in the country where students disappear. Disappearance isn't uncommon and no one dare stay in the library after dark. And so Esti Lugano has enrolled into this uh, prep school and hopes to find her dead father. Not literally, but that was the, her father's school. And so she's, I think, thinking maybe she can find out like who he was and, and things like that. She doesn't believe in ghosts and everything and then uh, Esty meets Mateo who is maybe maybe probably definitely a real ghost and an annoying one at that and then it says Mateo frames Esty for a theft of a rare book from a library so then he just like vanishes and so now Esty has to try to track him down and uh, try to figure out what in the world is going on or risk getting expelled from the school and uh she just never realized that being at this school and trying to fo follow in her father's footsteps to see who he was was going to get her into so much danger and things like that. And so I'm guessing that the romance is going to be between the ghost and the girl. And I'm just, I'm not real big on ghost romances. So I need somebody who's like down on the whole ghost romance thing to let me know how this is. But it, it sounds kind of cool. So we have Midnight at the Houdini by Delilah S. Dawson. It's young adult, it's a fantasy, it's from Delacorte. And I like uh, Delilah S. Dawson's middle grade, like, spooky books, but I've never read any of her, like, fantasy type things, or uh, I've never read um, a young adult book from her, or anything like that. So all I know is middle grade spooky. But this one sounds kind of interesting. It's about a girl who discovers a surreal hotel where no one ever leaves. When the clock strikes midnight, she'll be trapped there forever unless she's able to break free from the magic that is in turn breaking all of her rules. And so it has Anna has grown up in the glitzy Las Vegas, but her sister is the star. And when her sister reveals something that uh, reveals a betrayal... Anna runs off and ends up in this boutique establishment that she's never seen before. And the place is called the Houdini. And she gets in there. She meets a boy. But um, she finds out that once she's in, she can't get out. Unless they must figure some way to get out. I don't know. But so it's her and this boy in a place you can't get out of. So I don't know. It, it sounds kind of cool at the same time. I'm just not sure. So, somebody will need to let me know. <laughs> now, here's one that I actually have an e-galley uh, e of. I didn't know about it when I first did my anticipated reads and everything. But uh, the horror group that I am in on Facebook, they're uh, doing an extra horror book for October. And uh, this was one of the picks. And this is actually the one that did get picked. But after I, like, read what it was about, like, some of what it was about and just seeing the cover, I was like, oh, yeah, I need to try this one. And it's from a debut author, and it's, a, it's called There's No Way I Die First by Lisa Springer. And it's a young adult horror from Delacorte. But uh, it's a contemporary horror that follows a scary movie buff as she hosts an elaborate Halloween bash on her family's estate but soon finds the festivities, I can't speak, upended when she and her guest are forced to test their survival skills against the deadly party game. So, what happens is she, like, hires a low-budget it, 
clown. And I guess maybe he takes his role seriously. <laughs> so it's got something to do with the it clown. You can see it on the cover. It's in the, like the background. It looks really spooky. And so, yeah, I'm kind of curious to see uh, what happens. It might be fun. And then there's also the September House by uh, Carissa Orlando. This one is a horror. It's paranormal. It has ghosts. It's from Berkeley. And it says, A woman is determined to stay in her dream home even after it's become a haunted nightmare in this compulsively readable, twisty, and layered debut novel. Lots of debuts. When Margaret and her husband how buy a large Victorian house on Hawthorne Street. The sale at for sale at a surprisingly reasonable rate. You probably know what that's for. They couldn't believe they finally got a home of their own. Then they discovered the hauntings. Every September the walls drip blood, ghosts of former inhabitants appear, and all of them are terrified of something that lurks in the basement. Most people would flee. Margaret's not most people. But then her husband can't handle it any longer and he leaves. He takes off. He flees. But he did, it was a very abruptly. Like he's just gone and she can't get a hold of him. Like she tries to call him. She doesn't get a hold of him. Well, their daughter decides to make a trip to uh, their house. She's never been to their house, I guess. Which seems kind of unreal because it's like, I think, four years later that. Yeah, because after four years, he abruptly leaves. So, yeah, so it's been four years, and their daughter's never been to their house. That just seems kind of strange. <laughs> Sorry about the shake there. And, anyway, so she shows up, and she's looking for her father, but to make it worse, it's September again. So, something spooky is going to happen I, during that September. So, it, it sounds kind of cool. I don't know. What do you think? It sounds kind of cool. And the cover's, like, really cool. Okay, so, books that come out September 12th. I have, uh, Witch of the Wild Things by Rachel Vasquez Gillian. Probably butchered that last name. It's a fantasy romance, magical realism. It's got witches, and it's from Berkeley. It sounded kind of cool. It says, Legends go... Legends go that long ago, Flores' women offended the old gods and their family was cursed as a result. Now every woman born to the family has a touch of magic. The main character, Sage, reluctantly moves back home. And so something happens where she has to move back home. There's a second chance romance with, you know, a, a guy that broke her heart that was there. And it seems like there's going to be a lot of family drama uh, surrounding like stuff that has to do with their magic and things like that and yeah I'm kind of curious but I don't know it doesn't look exactly like something that I would read but I don't know I'm not huge on like magical realism but sometimes witchy books and the way they're put out I, I kind of think they're cool so we'll see Murder in the Family by Kara Hunter. It is a mystery thriller from William Morrow. So this one says, A shocking thriller about a cold case, a fictional true crime series, and a family caught in the middle. Six episodes, one killer. It was a case that gripped the nation. In December 2003, Luke Ryder, the stepfather of acclaimed filmmaker Guy Howard, then aged 10, was found dead in the garden of their suburban family home. But the killer was never found. Uh, not only Luke, but his uh, mother and two half-sisters were in the house at the time that it happened. But nobody was ever charged. They couldn't really figure it out. And says so some murder cases are simply too big to forget. Now it becomes the sensational new Netflix series, Infamous, de dedicated to investigating and perhaps cracking this famous cold case. So uh, they're going to re-examine all the testimonies and the witnesses and all that stuff, and they're going to try to figure out who actually killed Luke's uh, father or stepfather. 
and everything because like he was 10 then so i'm sure he's going to be maybe probably an adult now or something and uh it says murder in the family so one of them must have done something no one saw the killer but they all saw the body interesting <laughs> that sounds kind of cool then i have a historical romance and this one is every duke has its day by Su suzanne enoch and it's from saint martin griffin and uh this one i don't know if i said before it was september 19th but it says michael blumley duke of Lorington. H28, I guess this is important, is viewed as an eccentric by his peers in the ton, mo more interested in scientific pursuits. So his aunt entrusts him with her poodle, Lancelot, while she's traveling. And you got Elizabeth Bitsy Dockering, who's age 19, third daughter of a Viscount, is enjoying her second season in London. Diamond of the season, adored by all, but she has a poodle that everybody hates. And I can't I didn't put the name of that poodle down, but I can't remember. But now we got two poodles, okay? And says one of her suitors decides to hire a thief to kidnap the dog so that he can clear his way to Elizabeth. And so now we got both of the main characters end up meeting in a park with their dogs, and the dogs get mixed up. Now, I'm not quite sure how. They must be the same color. <laughs> but they get mixed up. And, of course, Lancelot is the one that gets kidnapped. Then the other dog goes missing. And then they end up having to, you know, get together and look for their dogs and fall in love. And it just sounded kind of fun. <laughs> the histor it's kind of different for historical romance. And so, so yeah, I'm, I'm really curious. Okay, so I'm down to the last three. September 26th have um, wrapped up with a bow by Lily Val. It is a contemporary romance set at Christmas time by Putman and Son. And not a huge contemporary romance reader, but this one sounded kind of cool. And I can't tell, but on the cover, does it not look like an older guy? It looks like he's got like white hair. And so I don't know if this is like an older relationship. I mean, it kind of sounds like it could be. In its heyday, Piney Peaks and its beloved Christmas house was fa made famous by Sleigh Bells, a romantic holiday movie. Fifty years later, the small town is ready for a new love story. As a successful film liaison, Alicia Rowe has her heart set on one thing and one thing only, putting her hometown back on the map. So when she gets a chance to secure a sequel to Sleigh Bells, she's willing to do whatever it takes to make sure everything goes smoothly. Unfortunately, that includes claiming, claiming to have already secured permission to film in the historic Christmas house. Permission she was very much denied by the gorgeous new owner. <laughs> Vess Hollins is only back in Piney Peaks long enough to sell the house he inherited from his great aunt. The holidays have always been tough for Viss, and it's not any easier when he's distracted by memories of Christmas long, long ago and the undeniable charm of neighbor Alicia. Ready to return home to New York as quickly as possible, he has no plans to put down roots or fall in love, even if Alicia unravels his hesitations like a bad Christmas sweater. <laughs> And, oh, it sounds fun. <laughs> I don't normally get too excited about Christmas books, but that one sounds kind of cute. So, let's see. And then we go from Christmas Holidays to Hexologist by Josiah Bancroft. And it says that it's the first book in a widely invent inventive and mesmerizing new fantasy series from acclaimed author... And I've, he's acclaimed, but I've never heard of him. <laughs> Where magical mysteries abound and only one team can solve the, hexo solve the hexologist. It is a fantasy. It says, it's mentioned, it's, maybe it's historical fiction. 
um, everything. It is uh, from Orbit. And it says, Hexologist Is and Warren Willoughby are quite a comp accustomed to be to helping desperate clients with bugbears of city life. Aided by hexes and bags of charmed relics, the Willoughbys have recovered children abducted by chimney wraths, removed infections of barbed nosed incubi, and ventured into gray plains of the unmade to soothe a troubling ghost. Well acquainted, acquainted with the weird, they never shy away from a challenging case. So, it seems like they're probably going to have a challenging case. Armed with love toughened by adversity and sticking to chalk that can conjure light from darkness, hope from the hope hopeless, Izzy and Warren will be are ready for a case that will test every spell, skill, and odd magical artifact in their considerable bag of tricks. <laughs> I don't know, but it sounds like it could be fun. I don't know, what do you think? Hopefully it's not uh, too sci-fi fantasy because it does have does mention sci-fi fantasy. I don't mind a little light when it comes to that, but um, you know, so far it's got pretty good uh, reviews or rating anyway. It's got a 4.15 rating, and everything. But yeah, it it sounds fun. And that is that the last one. Oh wait, no, I think I have one more. Okay, so the last book I have is uh, called The Stranger Upstairs by Lisa M. Matlin. It is a horror, thriller, mystery. It says it's gothic, all kinds of good stuff. And it is a debut psychological um, thriller, so we'll see. It says social media influencer with a secret past buys a murder house to renovate, but finds more than she bargained for from behind the peeling wallpaper. Sarah Slade is starting over as the new owner of the infamous uh, Blackwood House, the scenes of grisly murder-suicide. She's determined that the fixer-upper will help her reach a new audience on her successful lifestyle blog and distract her from her failing marriage. But she gets a little bit more than she bargained for when the builders start acting erratically and experiencing bar bizarre accidents, and Sarah knows that... Sarah knows there's only so long that she can continue to sleep in the bedroom with blood stain on the floor, suffer from mysterious footsteps she hears from the attic. And it says that uh, when menacing notes start appearing everywhere, she's convinced that somebody or something is out to kill her. So her husband, her neighbors, maybe it's the house itself. The more she remodels Blackwood House, the angrier it seems to become. And so, yeah, sounds kind of cool. Never heard of this. Uh, well, it's a debut, so don't know anything from this author. It has 621 reviews already, and it's got a 4.1 rating. So, either it's like really, really good, and it's from Bantam, I forgot to say that, or, uh, you know. It's going to be like one of those that everybody loves it and I don't. We'll see. But <laughs> it sounds cool. So there you have it. A bunch of books that I think sound kind of cool that are coming out in September. Um, like I said, I already did an anticipated reads and these are just some hopeful leftovers that sounded kind of cool and I wanted to talk about them. And I thought maybe, maybe y'all haven't heard of them. So, uh, you know, never hurts to talk about books. There are so many books that come out in September and only so little time and maybe I will put something on your TBR I know I put a lot of things on my TBR um, our ever-growing mountain pile of TBR anyway so let me know what you thought about these down in the comments and if you have a book that's coming out in September that I didn't mention here and I don't know I might not know about so add it to the list down in the comments so anyway I hope you enjoyed this video and if you did please Give it a like, subscribe, and I'll see you all in the next video. Bye.